Hey, well, uh, nice to to have some some of you guys here. <laughs> uh, somehow I'm going to improvise a lot, but I think that's okay. So, uh, I got lost like in this year MTF project and didn't have that much time to prepare this. But well, it's all about that. Uh, my name is Daniel Rosero. I'm a multimedia engineer. Uh, I'm from Colombia. Uh, also, I did a master's degree in data science uh, lately. And basically, I want to share some project that I brought with me uh, that is all about doing augmentation to the musician expression with the effects. So uh, somehow, you know, like uh, when this time in your life comes to take a path, like what you want to do when you are older, <laughs> uh, I told my parents that I wanted to be a musician. And well, they, they didn't, they were not that happy about that decision and somehow they pushed me to the engineer side of it that I also showed uh, since I was a little child. Anyway, uh, but I, I mentioned this because somehow some time ago I was asking myself if like if there is a way to merge these two different words together, you know, like you got the like logical stuff on a side and then like the abstract and the arts in the other. So I was like wondering uh, how can I merge these two things and, and somehow I came, that's why I came to this uh, multimedia engineer degree. <laughs> Um, you know, this is crazy. Do you know which instrument is this one? Anyone here? Yeah. It's crazy. It's, it's from late 20s, right? And at this point, it's really crazy that, uh, like, this guy who invented it uh, proposed a way a really crazy way to, uh, uh, like, um, like break all this uh, standard of expression in that time. You know, like it's a really, it's a more natural way of express the the instrument itself, right? More organic, or, or organic. I'm sorry. So anyway, um, I have been playing bass like 16 years ago. Since, yeah. And somehow, in all my experience, I have come into like two big issues to, to anyone who is playing like live music on a stage. And, and of course, it's worse if you use effects somehow. The first issue relates to uh, how you are like attached to an, an static space in the stage just because you are using pedals. When I say this, I mean, um, you know, I always put this example that uh, basically the guitar player is, can, cannot be around the drummer all time because at some point in the in the performance, maybe he's going to do a guitar solo or something, and he he has to just move to this static space in the scenery and push whatever effect he's going to use. Let's say a booster pedal or or wah. So, well, it it was an issue that I identified for me. Of course, it can be something subjective, right? But it, I thought like. It's a really interesting thing to try to solve this somehow, at least for me. 
So that's why uh, I came to this this project that basically was my bachelor's degree thesis. And there's like this other issue somehow, let's call it issue. And it's basically that I have been saying the word pedal. And this basically means that, you know, somehow the, the, the industry that develops musical gear has standardize like the your feet uh, yeah your feet to to perform this expression like this gesture right uh, but somehow there's a lot of technology now in in our hands there's a lot of really low cost technology that you can get anywhere so I don't know if you have seen this stuff going on, like, when vital some time ago. And, well, I'm showing this because of the guitar faces. Actually, if you search for bass face, I think bass players, they do worse faces. But anyway. Um, yeah, you know, at the end, it's all about gestures, like, you can somehow analyze the musician in a stage uh, just like a gesture machine. Well, <laughs> there are like functional and non-functional gestures, right? When I say non-functional, I'm talking about like the stuff that comes up naturally. Uh, you know, like these crazy faces or even like tapping your feet with the rhythm, right? Or moving your head, those all not non-functional. And when I talk about functional stuff, it's basically the one, the gestures that help to produce the sound. That's why like in a guitar or a bass, you are like doing this stuff with the strings, right? Or, or the strumming, the pick. So, those are functional gestures. Back to the presentation. So, uh, I based my thesis on on a paper from this guy, Marcelo Wonderley, uh, that he basically did analyze uh, these two main units on any Mm, like musical instrument somehow. Like you got a gesture controller unit that basically is the one that receives the gestures from the musician. And you got another unit that is the sound production one that is like the one that actually generates the sound. Um, and of course, there is some crazy stuff that can happen in the digital realm because this guy analyzed that when we talk about acoustic instruments, these two units are always like attach each other, but not in the digital realm because we can just mess up with this connection easily. And also like do crazy ways to capture those gestures, right? And not even, I can go even more uh, w far away from this <laughs> idea, just by saying like, there's no need that also the interpreter uh, is the one that controls those gestures. Like you can easily also make someone else or something else control those gestures. Nice. So, um, yeah, what I was saying, like somehow if you take a look in, into an acoustic guitar, you will see that, yeah, these two units are attached because uh, the, the sound production generator unit is that we can call this like the body of the guitar is attached to the gesture unit in, in a sense that, you know, like the bridge of the guitar is attached to the body. And yes, well, what I did is not nothing new, right? Because uh, there are like some 
commercial things, exploring this kind of gesture mapping, like uh, new ways to do it. Um, uh, there are like some companies building up some gadgets for that. So um, we got like this guitar wing that basically is it's all a uh, MIDI controller that you attach to your instrument, and then you get some sensors on it, like an uh, accelerometer. You got some faders, some buttons or pads, and you can easily map those MIDI messages to anything that you want to control from it, right? And also, I don't know if you have seen this, this is really old stuff also from 2014. Um, and it's basically a um, two-axis accelerometer that you attach as a ring to your hand. And that way you get to do this uh, expression control in a more natural and organic way, right, for, for a musician playing, you know? I can show a video. Yeah, so it's really interesting just to detach these two units, right? You can get two crazy ideas, like, and it, it has something to do with the project that I'm working on this year also. Uh, oh, I just remembered something. Well, okay, um, and that's all the slides. <laughs> I'm going to sh show this video that I, well, it's been a process, right? I, I have been doing this since 2015 or maybe the end of 2014. And well, I had made a lot of improvements to the system. Um, I'm going to show first this video. I, I'm going to put the subtitles that are auto-generated, but I think the first part is going to be good and maybe clarify some stuff. All right, I'm going back a little bit. Ingeniero multimedia y soy músico. Este es mi proyecto, se llama Infinite Sound Effects, ISFX, también lo conocen así. Básicamente este proyecto nace eh, buscando afrontar dos problemáticas que identifiqué de los músicos en el escenario. Una de ellas es la limitación Del, de la plataforma de pedales estático. Un músico en el escenario que usa efectos y procesos en vivo eh, depende de este espacio, entonces se le restringe su performance en el escenario. Un ejemplo básico es que el guitarrista no puede estar al lado del baterista cuando llega el momento del solo, porque tiene que ir a switchar, ir a pulsar el efecto para pues cambiarlo. Aquí tengo el efecto limpio. Entonces, si yo hago este patrón, o sea, voy a hacer la muestra. Hago el cambio de efecto agua. Yeah, I forgot to, yeah, it was like, I showed the issues first. And as you can see, also I had uh, a Converse boot that I had. Uh, I put two piezos on it, so I, I could sense uh, these patterns between the, how do you say, your toes and your heels, right? So basically, uh, this is the, uh, on that time was a Wi-Fi model with these sensors, and and then I get to 
to search out these combinations. Somehow, this way, with this wireless solution, the guitar player can be just next to a drummer and then, you know, like, he won't need to go to this static play platform just to switch the effects. I will cambio the efecto. All right. Uh, also, here you can see. All right. Um, at this point that I record this video, uh, this was the first version, so you will see that it was like really handmade stuff. <laughs> um, and the solution was not that good in terms of doing all the connections was really complex stuff. Uh, and now I'm going to talk about the new version. There's something also really interesting to add to this solution. Well, I, I haven't speak to uh, about what I got here. Uh, what I got here, I got uh, an embed system running all the audio processing on pure data. I, I got a Debian operative system running pure data and also like the, this sound interface is plug in straight to the embed, the embed system. So it's a nice thing because at the end it's multi-instrumental, right? You can, if you're going to use a microphone for a singer and it's a condenser one, you can easily put Phantom on it and plug it in. Or you can put, as you saw, uh, like, put the module on a trumpet or or whatever you think about. Also, at some point, well, I, if you got an instrument or something, you can try it out. I, I think it will be really interesting. And Nestor, Epa. All right. Uh, so what have changed? Or maybe, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I I don't have a slides about this. Or I can I think I got. Look, this is some pictures from the first version. Also, this is like this is the the model that you saw before. Basically, is it only. On that time, it was an, an Arduino Nano with an, an accelerometer, three-axis accelerometer. And I remember on that time, it, I, saw, I said that it was more complex because these models were connected to the embed system through Bluetooth. But I'm talking about really old Bluetooth, not low energy one. Um, right. So, last year I came to MTF for the first time, and it was an amazing experience. Somehow I got to remember my project because we hacked like this shoe, right? I, well, I got some videos, but not ready. <laughs> okay, and yeah, somehow made me remember about this long time ago, so we kind of had like the same approach, like let's put some piezos on the shoe, sends out when the person wearing them steps, and trigger some native audio, because uh, this MTF satanic shoes. <laughs> um, the nice thing is that all the audio it's coming from the microcontroller. It's, it's not it's not like a you know like a MIDI 
controller device. Okay, recording. Oh my god. Okay, lift your lift your foot. Lift. I need lift. you to lift your foot. Levanta, lift. levanta. Y. Okay. Here we go. For this, uh, we use an ESP8266, that is really low-cost microcontroller. If you have worked before with an Arduino Nano, basically it's an Arduino, uh, well, an old Arduino Nano with an embed Wi-Fi driver there, so you don't have to take care of, of that part. Well, back to the project. Um, yeah, so somehow I connected this with like remembering my my old approach to the static issue, right? Of of the pedals. This was the the version that I had when I did the thesis. And as you can see, like I had two separate subsystems. The one that goes to the hack boot that got the two PSOs and the microcontroller and and the one that is basically an accelerometer, right? And and this is all uh, this is all transferred by UDP protocol to the embed system. And yeah, I, I was saying that it was a complex complex complicated setup because I needed like to have a router you know, maybe uh, also put like the microcontrollers with the static IPs and and all that stuff. So yeah, I, at this point I was not taking my processor out because it was not ready. Maybe you could be asking like, why why didn't I use uh, a cell phone or a smartphone, right? Because basically in, we got these devices in our pockets and they are loaded with a bunch of sensors and obviously you got an accelerometer there. Well, I also explored that part and actually did some tests using uh, TOS OSC, that is it's, it's basically an application that allows you to take take this information from these sensors and, and stream it through OSC protocol. And yeah, and this was like the the system that I had also for that test. This this is the mobile device with the OSC touch OSC application. And then what I was doing is just receiving that on, on a machine and control if, if you wanted like a BST or do your process there with any software for that. And then also the sound interface going on there just to get the input of the instrument and the output, right? So what have changed? Well, when, when I finish Last year at MTF, I, I went back to my place and I received my first 3D printer. So I, I don't know, I, I thought, okay, I'm going to take two models from Thingiverse and somehow, yeah, manage to, to make this, to print this, like, how do you say that, like, box? <laughs> Okay, and right now, my system, as 
uh, something that have changed dramatically the like increase the the latency no not the latency decreases uh, is that right now like my expression model is basically a bluetooth low energy device that that means that it it speaks with my embed system via bluetooth it's low energy it's really fast and and it's, and it's reliable also so i made a lot of tweaking into into the operative system that is running on the embed system uh, in terms of that right now it acts just like um, a standalone device you know I, I I just plug it in and I don't need to take care of anything else because I got like some bashes some scripts that uh, they run when you boot it up and they take care of like the Bluetooth connection, like all the forwarding of, of the mini ports and, the, and all that stuff. So, so I think at this point I'm, I'm going to do a demo of it, a first one and yeah. Ah, oh, wait, I, want, I wanted to show something else. That is, um, I really love this video because it, it was in, back in 2015, I, I got invited to a festival that really opened my, my brain somehow. <laughs> I realized about the power of like the digital realm in, in music, right? Like they call this music electroacoustica, like electroacoustic music. Um, just give me one second. Get the, the video I want to show. So what you are going to see is a violinist first hands on on the device that I had back there, like my first version, and. It's really nice because you can see that he's exploring this new way of of expression, right? It, it's crazy for him, and, and you can see like his approach. It's really interesting.
As you can see, it's all about doing an augmentation, right? To to map like this more natural ways of expression that we got uh, on a stage. Uh, also, I wanted to add, this is like, this is using, um, this is a project that I, that I, I did with with uh, someone from my band. I, I got a new band where I get to play with this crazy stuff. That's why I love it. <laughs> and somehow we made this project with um, a trumpet player in Barcelona uh, just for an open call about technology in the trumpet world. And yeah, as I, as I was saying, right now my expression model acts as a Bluetooth low energy device and this grants uh, amazing features because you cannot just use it, uh, I mean it's not meant to be used only with my infinite sound effects processor but you can just plug it through Bluetooth to you know, to your machine and just use it in any DO. I don't know if that's well pronounced. That like, you know, like Reaper or, or, or yeah, or Reason now, got some stuff like that, or Live, you know? And just receive like this continuous controller to map it out to control anything that you want on your set. So, uh, we did this, also, uh, Juan Pablo, the guitar player from my band, he he made also a Bluetooth low energy device uh, that basically is a globe and also got an accelerometer and, and I add my module, so we were doing some stuff. The setup is what I just said. Those two models are not, are, are just connected to a MacBook through Bluetooth and then uh, you use them just to map whatever you want from, from your composition. In this case we had a live set going and, and it was moving some parameters on the effects of the trumpet microphone. Yeah. So this, well, is really a small thing. All right, I think at this point I'm, I'm going to play a couple of songs from my band. My band is, is my band name is Space Barman. We got Instagram and yeah, all the social media going on. Also, also you can hear us in SoundCloud as well. Well, okay, anyway, I'm going to play. Yeah. 
Yeah, I don't know if I should improvise something first or play these two songs and then improvise something. Well, I, I think first I'm going just to show how it works, right? So, uh, I don't know if, if there's, like, can you zoom here, Andrew? Here. So this is, for the people that know hardware, this is an ESP32. They are really low cost, and this is from a Chinese company that you can buy them with an embed OLED display as well, and got some buttons, and got a battery, but it's, it's really bad one. So that's why I added an additional LiPo one, added a, a switch so I, I can I can change between three patches that I got in this in the first one what I what I can do is um, oh okay wait So you got this like user interface that that I did really fast uh, with a red dot that basically shows you the way, like the measurement of the accelerometer somehow graphically, um, and is well, it's nice at some point to have feedback of of the controller, right? Like anyway, um, what I was saying. Yeah, so this is programmed as a Bluetooth low energy device and it's connected to like my audio processing unit. Just to fit it with the theory that I was saying before, as you can see, uh, like my unit of sound generation is the attached totally from, you know, from the one that actually uh, takes out the expressions from the musician. So that's nice. I mean, it's really crazy. Like, I could be playing something and just pass out the controller to someone if, you know, and, and just allow that stuff to happen. That's really interesting. And also, we're, we can explore it after. Okay, uh, so what's happening? I got, this is my clean sound. And with with this button, I get to somehow lock lock the LFO in in the place that that you want, or just set it free to interact. I'm going to push it, so I, I set it free, and just show. Here's like the highest. Yeah, so that's a nice way of expression. And it's, it's allowing me to express it that way just because I got this attached to my base, right? But I can just put this, like, I don't know, let's say I put it in my in a hat or something and, and I move naturally with the groove, right? So that's interesting. <laughs> I don't know, you could do stuff like... And I was saying the the lock button because you know like I can do like explore it if I get to a place that I like let's say there I just leave it like that and now I got lock. Yeah, 
Yeah. So that's the first one, right? The first patch. The second one that I got is doing all that control. Also remember that these patches are running on the embed system on pure data, right? So this is the second one. Is a delay Nestor loves it. And you're going to see him using it a lot, I'm sure. <laughs> Yeah, so here's the delay one. Um, basically, I can control, like, let's say, the, mm, like the, the time of, of the, oof, like, r like, oh, this is hard. I don't know how to express it. I'm going to show you, and then you tell me. So at this point I can feedback that way. So it's like with this axis I control like the the velocity of the rebounds, right? And with this axis I control the feedback of it. So can do Yeah, that's the delay that Nestor loves. <laughs> uh, and the third one is just totally randomness. I like this one. This is clean stuff. The, the tree and of course like this is not I got a really huge problem here with UX because it's really hard to be playing and try to switch the effects from this button here but I can solve it easily just by adding like a switch pedal and receiving like those control messages through the G GPIO from the board, right? And and this and then just implement it in, in pure data. Yeah, so let's play two songs.
name uh, what, what sorry uh, uh, that song name the song name is sex tape right and here comes one that is called tantra <laughs> <laughs> 